Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Dr. Pollard, our president, our faculty, staff, and students, welcome to uh, the chemistry lecture hall uh, in the Science North Building uh, at Montgomery College's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. Uh, we're all pleased to have you uh, in the room tonight, and we look forward to a fruitful discussion. Uh, but before that discussion can begin, and before I turn the microphone over uh, to Mayor Kate Stewart, uh, I need to issue a mea culpa. Uh, some of you may know uh, that my invitation last week uh, to the campus community about this meeting contained some incorrect terminology uh, about the design for the Math and Science Center being complete. Uh, I apologize if I misled anyone uh, and for jumping the gun on this topic. Uh, I just get so excited about a new science building for our students uh, that sometimes I got a little bit carried away. Uh, Dr. Pollard has not decided. Uh, on, the, on the final site for the new facility. And these community conversations have proved very valuable uh, to the college in helping her to gather all the information uh, she needs to make this very important decision for us. So thank you for coming. Uh, welcome. If you need anything, please let me know and I'll try to help you out. Mayor Stewart. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for folks who are here for the first time and those of you who have made this a threesome. So I've been to all three meetings. Um, I have to say, walking into the building, I was talking to uh, one of the residents as we walked in, just being in the chemistry uh, <laughs> lecture hall brings back bad memories, but uh, <laughs> I feel like I didn't study enough. Um, but I wanna thank everyone for being here. Um, as we've said, we've urged everyone to take part in these meetings because it is not only critical that we think about where, and I'm gonna emphasize where, because we're not talking about if, right? We are talking about where this math science building will be because it will be built, but where it will be built, it's not just about that, but it's really about building a relationship, building trust and partnership for the future. So I thank you all for being part of these meetings, for coming to multiple meetings, um, and it's, you know, to continuing this process and the dialogue. Um, we have listened carefully, um, and we've tried to craft each of these meetings to address the concerns that have been raised. As we've said in the past, sometimes we've done a better job than others. Um, this has not been easy this process, but we have tried to really listen and address the concerns we've heard from everyone. Um, I ask, um, and I've always remind myself of this while we go through this process, to please assume good intentions and for all of us to bring our best selves to this evening. And so thank you again for coming, and I'm going to turn it over to our facilitator. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have any dignitaries here, do we? No. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm John Antonyshack, and I'm your facilitator uh, for the third meeting. How many people have or are here for the first time? All right. Well, welcome. Uh, you missed two good uh, meetings, but we're certainly pleased that you're here today. And what it will do is give you a little recap of what happened so that you can feel that you're caught up as well. Uh, I, I want to go over what our purpose is and the agenda for today. All of you should have picked up an agenda on the table and hopefully you have signed in and have a name tag and a pink sheet today, a half pink sheet. So we're gonna use that half pink sheet for comments and questions. Um, and then there you had an index card and the index card we're gonna be using for our evaluation at the end of the meeting. So that's the purpose of all those pickups. If you didn't get one, we have more in the back. Well, what I want to do is uh, go over the, the objectives that we have for, for the uh, community conversations. And they're on your agenda again. And this is the objectives that the, the city and the college and the planning team came up with. And so it's to renew relations with the college and the community, to ensure all voices, stakeholders are heard to provide a full sharing of information, to offer a forum to inform and facilitate future college planning, 
to help inform and provide a foundation for the building design plan process and to balance the needs of the community, the neighbors, the students, and fiscal prudence. These have not changed from where we were at the very first meeting. They're the same for the second, and they're the same for the third. So let me uh, review with you the agenda for today, and you have that in front of you, and I'll just tell you about the process as well. We had the opening with uh, Dr. Stewart and, and Mayor Stewart. They're not related. Okay. Um, and then I want to go over our, what I'm doing now is the agenda and then our working agreements and, and then go into the community conversations, what happened at the last meeting, uh, provide you with some information about the feedback that we, we received, uh, and then also how we plan the agenda for today. And then followed up by uh, more information from Montgomery College and focusing in on the conversation and, and talking about the shared values. And so we'll have Dr. Pollard, the president of the college, and uh, Mr. M Marvin Mills, the uh, facil uh, facilities vice president uh, for the college to talk about that. You will have opportunities to ask questions. All right? We have built-in questions uh, again. If you were here at the last meeting where we had the, the college do some presentations, some information, then you had an opportunity to ask questions, and we'll have the panel up front again for you to be able to ask questions. So as we are going through this, if you have thoughts, the pink sheet is there for you to write your thoughts and comments down. Uh, one of the challenges that we have in the past and we we'll, may have again tonight is the, the amount of time that we would like for everybody to have to speak. Uh, we have extended the, uh, the meeting till 9.30 tonight. In the past two meetings, it went till 9 o'clock. And so we heard you and increased the time so you had more time to be able to speak. And if we get done early, we'll get done early. Um, so with that, then we'll talk about next steps in moving forward. We know that at the end of today, we're not going to resolve everything that we wanted to talk about. So we'll talk about where do we go from here after the third meeting, because this is what we agreed to, have three community conversations, and this, as you know, is our final one. But it, the conversations and the process does not stop here. And then we'll have closing remarks by Dr. Pollard and Mayor Stewart. Great. So let me, again, for those of you who are here for the first time, uh, I am a neutral facilitator. I am not employed by the uh, college nor by the, by the city. Uh, I was a educator for Montgomery County Public Schools and an administrator. Uh, and I also do this uh, as a, cons uh, a consultant for international, national leadership development, facilitation, and so forth. And I've been doing that for the last 10 years. So I have no vested interest in your outcome, but I have vested interest in, in the process and making sure that as many people can be heard, is heard, and that we have a process that is workable for everyone. All right. We good so far? OK. So let me talk about the, the conversation agreements. And, and these are some people refer to them as ground rules. And I'd just like to go over these with you the last time uh, again. Uh, you've been doing a wonderful job of adhering to these, and I really appreciate it, keeping it professional as possible. And, and I hope that you can continue do, doing that as well. Listen with an open mind. Everybody has their points of view and their perspectives, and we want you to be able to have that as well and listen to them. Be respectful to, to other points of view. Be positive and courteous. Be brief in meeting when voicing your opinion. All right, uh, when we have questions in that, I will have some time limits for you to be able to ask your questions until we get responses so we have as many people to be able to uh, speak as possible. And seek common interests rather than digging in on positions. We're looking for the best uh, possible means for the, for the college and the students and for the, the community as well. And honor time limits and commitments. Can we get agreements on, uh, on our conversation agreements? Yes. Thank you. So uh, last meeting, just to briefly go over that with you, and for those of you who are not here, we did something similar to what we're doing tonight. We had the community conversation meeting once. We, we looked at the comments that we received, uh, did some feedbacks, and then uh, the college was able to uh, give us some information, and they had written uh, FAQs. 
And if you were not here, you liked one, we have some in the back as well. Those are available to you. And then they also gave a handout on uh, the chemical materials that are used in the laboratories on, on campus. Those are two handouts that they provided. And then we had opportunities for 12 people to speak. Uh, we had two groups. Uh, initially, we had Tacoma Park. Uh, they had around eight minutes to share their, their thoughts and comments. And then we had representatives from East Silver Spring have about eight minutes to share theirs as well. And then individuals were able to um, ask questions and comments to the panel. And then we followed up with an evaluation. When, um, what we did with all that information that we collected, the comments that we heard live at the meeting, you also had the pink sheets that many of you turned in to us at the very end. And you also had a chance to submit more comments online. Um, and so we had, let me get my numbers, a, a total of, we had 12 public uh, speakers. We had 25 people who submitted the yellow sheets. We used yellow sheets, not pink sheets last time. And we had seven people who submitted items online for us to look at. And with that information is what we use to develop today's agenda, as well as to guide us in, in the direction that we needed to go. Uh, out of the, all those, we had over 75 comments total, and we used that, and, and we took it all to heart. And the planning group consists of the city of Tacoma Park, Montgomery College, myself, uh, city councilman, uh, Mr. Kovar, he was part of it as well. We designed the agenda for you for today. So let me uh, go over some of the comments, and these are uh, redundant from, from what I just said. Um, in your agenda, if you wanted to read each one of those, the website is on your agenda as well. And if you want to submit new information after today's meeting, that web link is also on your agenda. So here's the, what, we, what we came up with, what we found that you had still an interest and wanted to just talk about uh, in more depth. And some things we know that it would take much longer than the few hours that we have tonight. Uh, but I want to share those with you of how we kind of categorize the, the information that we received. One is the academic needs and considerations, right? And the location options, building design, construction process, cost, time, and the neighborhood impact and community uh, amenities. So we had those five categories, and within each one of those categories, it was even more defined. And some of those uh, pieces for each one, I just will go over quickly. Not that we're going to go over each one of these tonight, but I just wanted you to see what the interest was still there. So the lab space design, math science building, we're still looking at the square footage, the current and future enrollments, physical connection to math science, uh, the sports and athletic facilities, and the student displacement during construction. Right. Those are still things that you wanted to have more information in regards to. The other category of location options, uh, the previous campus plan, uh, the 2006 to 2016, uh, the uh, current, I think I have those numbers back, it should be 13 to 16, the current uh, campus plan, as well as Burlington Avenue, or what is also referred to as the W1 parking lot. All right. If you hear Burlington and W1, they're the same. Uh, the building design had a, still have an interest in, in the aesthetics of it, and there's and the height, the footprints, the setback, whoops, and the, and the setback. In regards to the construction process time, and, and it was still looking at what was the previous plan, what does the current plan, how much money does it cost, how long does it take, and then also what are the options with Burlington. And we'll be addressing some of those, a lot of those tonight. Again, not everything. Uh, neighborhood impact and community amenities. Uh, the traffic during construction, actually before, during, and after construction, what will it look like. Uh, the parkland preservation, and also Falcon Hall and the athletic facilities. So 
So those are items that you still had a great interest in, and we wanted to try to categorize that and, and address a lot of these, these pieces tonight. Again, not everything will be able to be addressed. So with that, I want to turn it over to Dr. Pollard, who will give you more information about some of those specifics. And, and we'll have an opportunity to ask Dr. Pollard and Mr. Mills questions uh, after they, they go through their presentation. Thank you. you. I, th I think so. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus. As uh, Dr. Stewart alluded to earlier, we're grateful to have you here. There are plenty of seats down front if anybody wants to actually come and sit. Uh, if not, we'll continue to speak to wherever you are. Uh, like uh, Mayor Stewart, I must admit I have some trepidation in being in a chemistry classroom. I have a couple of degrees in English, and I also have a minor in religious studies. So this kind of messes me up in a lot of ways. And there's also a few more of them than I remember when I was in school. Does anybody else have that phenomenon? Yeah, I, I think mine stopped way over here somewhere. So um, I'm delighted to have you here today. And very similar to what John said, and someone asked me when we came in, uh, I think that we all agree upon the fact that we need new facilities. Uh, what we're taking the opportunity to do here today is to talk about where those facilities are located and what are some of the shared values and interests that we have in terms of that. Uh, right now, um, I think that we have been listening very astutely. I've tried to do that. And one of the takeaways that I realize is that there are a set of shared values, I think, that have underlaid this particular conversation. And some of the values that we recognized based on what we've been hearing from you for the last several uh, weeks as we've done this process. One, sustainability. Uh, there is a, com a complete commitment and understanding that we want to have a building uh, that will have a significant impact on student learning, but not have a significant impact on the environment. And recognizing, again, also the historic character of this community. How do we find a building that can fit into that and also respond to residential needs while keeping in mind the need as well for classrooms that are state-of-the-art, labs, and learning spaces. Uh, one of the things I've also heard uh, during here is a shared interest in having uh, a quicker process, um, moving toward a completion, recognizing that facilities development is indeed a very complex one, but that's a shared value that I've also heard in here. And I've also heard some interest, particularly as it relates to our values, and your values as well, recommending as taxpayers, how do we do this also with fiscal discipline and prudence? Uh, we know that there has been a fixed budget for this building, and we also know that uh, it's highly unlikely to secure additional resources for it. So with that in mind, we've been very thoughtful about what we're hearing. And today, what we're going to do is lay out what we believe to be some thoughtful options based on what we've heard from you. Uh, these shared values, and I also think the feedback uh, that we've received from you and also the feedback that I've received from my facilities team and also a set of national uh, architects who've worked on both the first facilities master plan and the second facilities master plan that the college has developed that John referenced earlier, uh, led me to several conclusions. And I think what's very important about that is that we believe, and I believe, and I don't know how I can recommend otherwise, that the W1 lot is not a viable option for the science and math facility. However, we've heard from you in some very different ways about some ideas that might work, and we're gonna talk about that. Some of the reasons that we felt this based on what you've seen here, it's not the right size for a math and science facility. Secondly, uh, it does not maximize our interdisciplinary teaching that we know needs to occur between math and science. We've also believed that it would be cost prohibitive due to the premium for extra materials. The higher you go, it costs more. And we have a fixed set of resources that have been identified for this project. It does not meet student and cultural arts centers patrons parking needs. Uh, we, it is cost prohibitive to go below ground. Uh, that takes away from construction costs. Uh, there are about 87 or 84 parking spaces on that particular site. That's a problem for us. And then we also believe that this site would be best used for future affordability, affordable options for growth and expansion of the campus. And last but not least, 
The W1 site, as we call it, I tend to call it, and thank you, John, for pointing out, I go back and forth based on what audience I'm in, does not address rapidly deteriorating science in North and South buildings. So for us, and I think I articulated it last time, but Mayor Stewart uh, challenged me to be much more specific about why I would not be able to make a recommendation to my Board of Trustees about why this particular facility or that space is ideal for math and science. But what I have heard from you in these last two, both formal and informal conversations between me and also members of my staff are a couple things, is that you all have some interest in looking back at the other facilities master plan. So to make sure that all of us are in the same space about what the options are, the milestones, the implications, timelines, and so forth, so we aren't privileging any group of people in this conversation, I've asked Mr. Mills to come in and lay that out. And we're gonna be very brief about this, respond, and then go directly to questions, I believe is what you've asked us to do, John, correct? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Mills, I'll turn it over to you. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Pollard. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to be as brief as I can, but uh, we do have a lot of information to kind of provide to the folks that haven't been here before. Um, a facilities master plan is basically a, a long-range plan that supports our academic master plan, which is the driving force for, uh, for what we do here at Montgomery College. Um, the Coma Park campus is a full-service campus, therefore we have to make sure we provide all the facilities we need to make sure our students are well-educated. And the original East Campus uh, site needs to be modernized. With that caveat, I will tell you that there will be no more expansion on the East Campus. All the expansion will be in the Silver Springs area. Okay. Um, we have guidelines. I'm not going to read all this to you, but uh, basically we have uh, vision guidelines that we used when we started to develop our master plan. We articulated those to our uh, professional uh, uh, staff that actually uh, did the uh, contract work for us in designing our master plan. The uh, 2006 to 2016 master plan uh, actually has the, uh, the new construction on Science North and Science South. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that particular uh, impact is in a second, but uh, that is particularly the, uh, what we're talking about tonight about that particular master plan. The 2013-2023 master plan actually has Science South and Falcon Hall as the uh, the two buildings that would be replaced in the 2013-2023 master plan. Uh, this is just a little bit larger map. You can see uh, the, uh, the two uh, large yellow buildings here that I've uh, highlighted there. That's the, uh, those particular buildings there uh, in the, the old master plan. And what we call the new master plan, you can see that the, uh, we've got uh, Science South and Falcon Hall would be the ones that we would be replaced. Some comparisons, which probably is very easy to do. Um, the main thing we want to do is rejuvenate the, uh, the campus. We want to preserve the existing character of the neighborhood, and we actually have that for both plans. Uh, we want to foster interdisciplinary uh, teaching. Uh, what happens now uh, and what's going on in the pedagogy of the, uh, of the new uh, teaching method is that science and mathematics are very intertwined. And so that uh, the new teaching method is that you teach science and you teach math concurrently. The, uh, the old master plan replaces science south and science north with two four-story buildings. Can't do the much change into that. The, the new master plan replaces, excuse me, oh, wrong way, let me go back here. The, uh, the new master plan actually replaces Science South and Falcon Hall with, a, with one building, one phase, takes about four years between design and, and total construction, where the, the old master plan, two buildings, two phases, total of eight years, design and construction. In both master plans, uh, the expansion uh, of, of any campus is, is re restricted to the, to the Silver Spring side of, of, the, of the area. As we mentioned before, the, the old master plan requires two, uh, four stories, a very large mass building, 
uh, rooftop air handling units, so that's another 15 to 20 feet above that. Uh, the gross square footage for both are the same. Uh, the, the old master plan is about 87, shade over $87 million, with the new master plan being uh, a shade over $85 million, so a savings of about $2 million. Uh, the old master plan, as I mentioned, two phases, about eight years total construction uh, in the area. Uh, the new master plan, we're, we're done in four years. The, the, uh, the, the new master plan, as I said, is 80, a shade over 85, about $85.5 million. Uh, single phase, uh, we demo uh, Science South and Falcon Hall and then build a new building right on that same site. Uh, as I said, timeline, four years. Two years design, two years construction. Um, it delivers it four years earlier, so we get our students into uh, modern classrooms four years earlier than the, uh, the original plan. Um, and we've also made sure that we're going to make sure uh, the, uh, on the Falcon Hall side of that that we'd have a, a very low standing building with all the, the large mass on the Science South end of the building. We have a lot of more flexibility with our, with our new master plan than the old master plan. Uh, we uh, talked about uh, some things that we have been hearing from, from you, the citizens, um, and basically these were our, our guiding uh, uh, guidelines for our community conversations. And number one, we wanted to create a design that integrates the building you know, with the existing campus and the neighborhood. We want to coordinate the building size so that the overall character and scale is with the other buildings on the campus and kind of matches the immediate neighborhood. We want to maintain the existing setback of Falcon Hall in accordance with state, county, and municipal regulations. And we want to maintain the existing trees and green space to extent practical. Add intermediate landscaping if we can uh, with buildings and sidewalks that enhance the green space. Yeah, we're all about sustainability, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, construction mitigation, uh, we heard you about the, the concerns about construction. Uh, we want to coordinate construction to minimize disruption to the events on campus and also in the community. We're going to make sure we meet all the noise ordinances as required. We're going to provide additional off-site parking for students, faculty, and staff uh, because we've heard that there's a lot of concerns in the neighborhood. We think this construction should not do any more to impede that. Uh, we're looking at a, a cell phone lot, if, you, if you're familiar with what happens at the airports when you get on to pick up somebody, they put you in a cell phone lot, the person calls, you go to pick them up and you, you move. And we want to try to set that up. We're going to try to figure out a way to set that up to, again, minimize the uh, disruption to the neighborhood with parking. Uh, we're going to mandate off-site parking for the uh, construction crews. We're going to identify some lots off-site for that. And we're also going to mandate off-site parking for the delivery trucks for the construction. There again, like a radio lot where the, the uh, delivery trucks will go to the radio lot. When the site is ready for that truck to come in, they call it one at a time. They come in, offload, get out, and the next truck doesn't come in until that truck is gone. There again, not to stop, have those trucks stopping in the neighborhood, uh, you know, at any times of the day, uh, you know, running their diesel engines, making noise, uh, disrupting traffic in the neighborhood. So we heard you, and we're trying to, we think we can uh, accomplish all those things. Uh, we've got a lot of supporting documents that we've provided, um, and we've got details uh, maybe on the back table. But if you don't have a copy, there's this website, uh, www.montgomerycollege.edu, conversations, and all the documents we provided are on that website to include our, our master plan, our, athletic, uh, our academic master plan, and all the different handouts we've had over the, over the years. So. And now, questions and comments. Uh, before we take questions and comments, um, we have a handout to give to you on the West Campus parking lot W1, the fact sheets. So you have some of that information that was already shared. We have a handout for you that has that in more detail. Right. And, and while those are being passed out, I want to go over how we're going to field questions and comments. And so this is your opportunity to respond to what was already shared and things that may not have been shared at this time, but you'd like to have questions. Um, so we're going to ask everybody to limit your time when you speak. And if you could condense it down to no more than three minutes, 
and hopefully you can share everything you need to share within that amount of time. If not, I'm going to ask, I will help you, prog you along to, to uh, conclude your conversation. And then after each question, we will have the panel or those who need to answer those questions answer the question for you. Uh, we would like for you to be able to state your name and your affiliation. Now, one of the things that we want to be able to do is get a, a diversity reflection of your thoughts and comments. And we have a lot of stakeholders, different stakeholders in the room, from uh, Silver Spring residents to Tacoma Park, to the college, to the students, to who else have I missed? Other representatives? Those are the four primary stakeholders, and there may be others as well. And so we want to be able to hear from everybody. And, and a lot of you have been here for two or three meetings and haven't had a chance to be able to speak because there's just too many who wanted to be able to speak. So I want to make sure that I can accommodate those as well. And, and then we'll see how much time we have as, as we go along. We have a, a good hour of questions, if need be. Uh, I would like for you to stay on the topic that we are talking about at that time. And also, if you're in agreement with what someone is sharing, you have your pink sheet, and we've done this in the past, we're gonna do it again today, is if you're in agreement with that, just hold up your pink sheet so we can see how many are also supporting that statement. Instead of clapping or hissing or whatever, we'll use the, the pink sheets, all right? And if you have thoughts and, and comments, again, the pink sheet is there. If you need more than one pink sheet, we have them. Right, so feel free to use those. And then just be professional and respectful to each other, and we'll get as many comments and questions as possible. Any questions for me before we get started? Right. If not, who has the first question? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I would, and, and state your name and affiliation. Hi, my name is Paul Krastowski. I, I have really three stakeholder groups I talk about here. One is I live near the college. The second is I may be the only person in the room who graduated from a community college in a STEM field, went on to get a PhD and become a practicing scientist many, many years ago. A third is, so I, I have a lot of, of empathy and interest in community colleges, obviously. The third is I'm also an academic. I've taught most of the courses that are being taught here in chemistry and environmental sciences, so I know them very well. I do have just a couple of questions. One is, when I teach, I ask my students to show their work. On an exam, you can't just turn in the answer to the exam. You have to go through all your work, how you got to that answer. One thing I've been very frustrated with in this process is that we're not getting any of the work. We're only getting the answers. So for example, we get a cost number, 85 million, 87 million an unknown cost number for the W1 Burlington. We don't see any of the work that went into that. We don't see how those calculations were done. Uh, this would apply to, to both the cost, to the time of construction, et cetera, things like that. So that, that's been one of my frustrations. Another is I just kind of want to correct the record a little bit. Interdisciplinary teaching is not a new topic. Uh, I integrated math and chemistry in the 1980s. We taught a unified course in math and chemistry in the 1980s. I have a textbook even older than that, I won't tell you how old, but it's called Advanced Engineering Mathematics. That was one of my undergraduate textbooks. So this is not a new concept, and I think that we can all be flexible in how we integrate these concepts with each other. And one way of doing that, of course, is with computer-aided instruction. You know, the Nobel Committee in Chemistry two years ago announced that the chemistry is now not done at a bench. Chemistry is done on a computer. And I would strongly recommend that the college emphasize to the greatest degree possible computerized uh, aided it, teaching work, laboratory work in chemistry and some of the other sciences to one, minimize the amount of space you need for labs and exposure to potentially hazardous substances. Okay, I see close. Yes, but number two, this is what employers are looking for now. When we hire people coming out of colleges, we want people who are facile and computer-aided design, computer-aided chemistry. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. If you're in agreement, please uh, show your pink card. All right. 
If I, I can respond for yes, John, yeah, thank you very much for that. I think you probably do have a distinction in terms of your credentials that uh, we would very welcome uh, have you in the room and certainly within Montgomery College uh, teaching at any given time. Uh, what I would offer to you is that there are very strict formulas that we have to use for construction that are set by the state of Maryland. I will gladly have our construction team put on the website the uh, documentation for the calculation for the capital project for math and science. The other thing I'll draw your attention to is that we're not exactly new in this process. Uh, we've just completed two science buildings uh, on one at the Germantown campus and a science complex at the Rockville campus. I completely agree with your ideas, and I'm not a chief academic officer or a scientist. I think if I asked Dr. Sneezek, he would offer that we do much of what you're talking about in terms of computer simulation and computer-aided teaching. Uh, but we're also limited to what is able to transfer to our four-year institutions. And they're very clear about the requirements and the, uh, the way in which oftentimes these courses are taught. I completely agree that we need to have more flexibility. We need to be very thoughtful about what the employers want, which is why we have uh, employer-based uh, advisory groups that give us that constructive feedback. But I will make sure that we are able to show our work very definitively uh, because it's a very rigorous process that we have to go through with the state of Maryland and certainly with the county as well that we have to put those together. Um, you'll have somebody from your office upload that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It'll be on the site tomorrow. We'll have somebody put it on the site tomorrow. Other questions? Right. Yes, ma'am. Wait for a minute. Hello. Is this thing on? Yeah. Yes. Hi. My name is Catherine Shelton. I'm a MC alum. I went on to University of Maryland to get my aerospace engineering degree. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I am currently a resident at Tacoma Park. Love it here. Um, love the community. Love the people. Wish I could get to know more of them. So, <laughs> um, I I work out of town. I don't work in Tacoma Park. So, uh, my question to you is: It seems that everyone is obviously in agreement that the students do need a new facility, and that's kind of a moot point. But um, the point of contention is being that there is some sort of underground parking garage that MC says is out of the budget. Now, this is. Uh, Again, I have no idea about the details of the cost of this project, but um, in an effort to kind of meld the Tacoma Park community and kind of heal some old wounds from the 70s from what I heard in the last meeting is why don't we have some sort of fundraiser to maybe, maybe not completely have the underground parking garage, but have community involvement, have a fundraising activity, some sort of raising of, of funds in order to actually accomplish more of what the you know residents of Tacoma Park would like I'll respond we certainly welcome the opportunity to do fundraising uh, our primary mission around fundraising has been uh, scholarships for students we have had some capital projects we've done that uh, the, the the difference in parking lot and this is I'll turn it over to my facilities person but roughly the difference is that a parking space we estimate in the way that the construction world calculates roughly twenty five thousand dollars for a parking space when you take that parking space underground it minimally goes to fifty thousand dollars it increases uh, based on the bearings that are needed there the materials and so forth now I may be way out of line there but you, am I all right yeah you're pretty close uh, in this area, there's a lot of what they call karst, so the, the, the rock is pretty close to the, to the surface. So there'd have to be a lot of blasting, there'd have to be a lot of uh, drilling, uh, and as Dr. Pollard said, it's about $50,000 a space, a space for underground parking. Because you gotta remember, you gotta have all the support columns, you've got to have uh, all the concrete, the asphalt, it's gotta be reinforced, because all that has to support the structure of the facility too, so about $50,000 a space. So you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of four, uh, $4,200,000 to $5 million just, just to do underground parking, which was not part of the, the original plan for the, uh, that we actually took to the, uh, to the county and to the state. Okay. See if we went this way, that way. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me get a gentleman back who had just had his hand. Now, uh, back there first, and then I'll come back to you, ma'am. Wait, what? Can you wait until we get a microphone, please? My name is Steve Hanks, and I'm part of the faculty here at Tacoma Park. I uh, noticed in the second phase plan, the second plan that you had 
that the elimination of Falcon Hall and the athletic facilities is part of the plan of where you're going to put the science building. But I also noticed further down the list in the plan that there was some alternative fitness and health facility that was planned. Can you clarify what that was about? It was, it was about two-thirds of the way down your list in that That's second correct. plan. That's uh, correct. Further down in our, in our master plan, and it hasn't been scheduled yet, would be the replacement of uh, Falcon Hall by putting a new uh, athletic and, and health center uh, on the site of Science North, this building here. But that's not simultaneous with that's the building That's not simultaneous, no, sir. So is what not. is the long-range plan of when that might happen? When At this point in time, it's probably five to ten years. Five to ten years. That's optimistic. And that's very optimistic. Yeah, it's all about funding and, you know, we have to admit now we're competing against all the other community colleges for state funding. Uh, it's always a match. State funding is, uh, and, and the county has to match it. So, uh, and we can only get maybe one capital project a year or and, and we, so have other, we have other needs. So. so if I understand correctly, there's a window of five to 10 years of lacking health and fitness facilities. There will be a, uh, there won't be a, a facility here on this particular campus, but we are making arrangements to have uh, some type of uh, support for that uh, close by if at all possible. With, with that, I, I don't, one of the things we shared at the last session, I, I appreciate your question because it's, it's important clarity. One of the, we had to prioritize, and someone um, last time uh, suggested that we were prioritizing math and science over health and PE, and that's correct, we are. Uh, math and science is a required uh, requirement for graduation for every student, whether this be a two or a four year institution. And for us, we had to place that because these facilities, I think as all of us agree, are not competitive for students to be able to learn math and science the way they can to step into the workforce uh, that was referenced earlier. Uh, our hope is based on any county and state funding to be able to put another a wellness athletic facility here. But we also knew that the county was in the process of building a new facility uh, that's scheduled to go, uh, start break ground in a year, if I'm correct. Where is somebody of my people who know this? Um, 2019. 2019, and what we, simultaneously be the time when we tear down Falcon Hall, hopefully in this design plan, we would be able to help, which is roughly a mile, a mile and a half away from this campus, a state-of-the-art athletic facility uh, that has swimming pool, you name it, it's going to be a beautiful facility, and the county has now moved that into its uh, facilities for this year. So that was part of our staggering of that to make sure that we were able to be responsive, and certainly, as uh, Mr. Mills mentioned, is the idea of being able to say, how can we help people in that transition? Uh, similarly, we've done other projects we've helped supplement where we needed to be to allow for that transition but right now we did have to place that priority thank you hi my name is Catherine Hill and I am a, both a resident of Tillman Park and also have done some um, temporary work with uh, working over at the, at the college so um, I have to, since I'm from Tacoma Park I have to bring up the question about the trees we wouldn't be Tacoma Park if we didn't talk about trees so I just wanted to raise I know there's been some concern I'm not totally clear on there's some very large and really beautiful trees here so I wanted to bring them up thank you our, uh, part of our, uh, uh, I think we didn't put it in the design uh, criteria, but one of the criteria is that we maintain all our trees. And actually, if we can, we want to put more in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we, we understand that. We want to keep the, uh, the, the historic nature, trees and all that, make, make part of Tacoma Park, and we want to keep that, that ambiance for the, for the community. So we are committed to protecting those trees as, as best we can because we want to keep them. We do want to keep those trees. Thank you for your answer. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Judy Hill. I'm a local resident of the Silver Spring area. I'm also a swimmer here. Um, I've been a math and science high school teacher for about 30 years, and I had a son that went to Montgomery College. Um, I just wanted to point up something that I noticed when we were comparing the old plan and the new plan in terms of the timeline. Um, the old plan was. Uh, stated that it would be eight years and the new plan four, but we weren't comparing apples to apples. The new plan did not include the demo of the Science North building, whereas the old plan did include the demo of the Science North building. So to me, if you were going to compare the two, 
you would kind of want to match them up a little bit better. So if you included the demoing of the Science North on the new plan, it's not really going to be a four-year project. It could actually be more than a four-year project if you were comparing two more equal things. Um, also, the price, the 87 million for the old plan versus the 85 million of the new plan didn't include the remodeling of the rebuilding or remodeling of the Science North building. So to me, that wasn't quite a matchup in the cost because even if you waited five or 10 years, it could end up being a lot more to have the two separate plans. Um, so I guess my question is, um, I guess that's more of a comment than a question. Um, I guess, do you have any comments about what I've said? <laughs> well, I, I think there uh, there may be a little bit of confusion. Okay, the 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 2006 2016 master plan actually had the the demolition of South Hall, building a new South Hall, and then demoli demol excuse me demolishing North uh, Hall, and then rebuilding that. So basically, that's the way that was. We wanted to keep one of the uh, laboratory science buildings in operation while the other one was being reconstructed. In the 2013, excuse me, 2013 2023 master plan, uh, Science North stays in function while we take down Science South and Falcon Hall, rebuild those, and at some point in time later on, we would actually uh, either replace or remodel this building. So basically, uh, uh, in the, the old plan, it takes longer because we need to keep a science building uh, in operation while one is being constructed, demolished and constructed. So you design one, demolish it, build it back up, and then you design the other one, take it down and build it back up. We have to keep one science building open on this campus, and that's why in the new plan, we still keep science north is because we need to keep that science facility open. So. No, though the cost the costs were were provided by a an independent professional firm uh, that did that. We did not do that in house. That was a that was an estimate from a from a, a professional yeah. firm. So. so I was talking about how the, the, the new plan doesn't have the two phase. That's correct. That's correct. We want we 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 listened and we heard that they wanted something a little bit faster. So <laughs> we uh, in the second plan, the newer plan, it was a takedown. Uh, Science South and Falcon Hall at the same time and build them back up as one, one so facility. Excuse me, uh, we're going to hold on one at a time, please. Please be respectful. All right. If you'd like to follow up with that question, yeah, yeah. all right. So what, Thank you. So it just seems like the, the total cost of the newer plan hasn't really been shown to us. We're not Marcus. Well, Science North in the in the in the new plan, Science North stays as it is for a while. We have not even uh, got those estimates yet. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. We have one question. We're going to rotate some okay. of these questions, please. All right. Yeah, this lady right here has had her right. hand up for quite a while. Okay. Can we bring it down to? <clears throat> I'm Marcy Stickle with the Silver Spring Historical Society. And I follow up on what this lady has just said. It seems you get to keep Falcon Hall with the first plan. You keep your phys ed program, your swimming program, your basketball courts, and you move forward with a new, you know, math and science construction, you know, phased. And you don't, and you keep your Falcon Hall. Um, you don't deny your students in the neighborhood the, the swimming pool, the tennis courts. It's a wonderful benefit. The other idea is get top-notch architects to design on the Burlington parking lot. You will have a marvelous structure if you have top-notch architects design it there. At least give it a chance. But I don't. I personally think the 2006 to 2016 makes more sense than the newest plan. Need to comment on that? Uh, no. okay. uh, thank you All for right. your comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, agreement to uh, uh, pink cards I, I have neglected to ask. Thank you. All right. Other questions? All right. I want to get other points of views in different parts of the, in the back, against the wall, please. And in this 
Hi, my name's Elizabeth right, Kerwin. I live in Tacoma Park, and I'm an avid swimmer. I swim every day at Falcon Hall for the last 30 years. Um, I kind of feel like we're wasting our breath here. Like, it's a done deal, right? Falcon Hall is going to be demolished. It doesn't matter what we say or how many questions we ask. There's no serious alternative plan being considered. Is that correct? That is not correct. Oh, it's not? Okay. No, no. The, I'm glad to we've, hear that. We've offered up two options, which is the previous master plan and the current master plan. And they're being seriously considered? They are seriously being considered. Uh, one of the things we have, we have a, uh, Mr. Antonishak will talk about a working group. They're going to make some recommendations to Dr. Pollard. Okay. She will make the final decision. Okay. Okay. But well, we I just, still are open to that. We are still open to, to both master plans. I'm very glad to hear that. And let me respond to that because I think there, there's been a lot of assumptions about this process. And, and I, I've, um, whether it be elected officials, people who are within the college, people who are within the community, uh, I've been very clear, and probably Kate and I have had 1,500 text message exchanges or conversations about this. And every time I've had to respond to people, I say, honor the process. That's what I, so the, from the first meeting when we get done, people thought the process was over and that decision was made. And I've been very clear. I, I take a lot of notes. I've listened. The, the presentation today, I don't know if you saw the first part, was a reflection of what we've heard thus far. I even said in my comments, we put the old master plan back on the table based on what we've heard. The old master plan still has Falcon Hall in there. There are other implications for that as well, but it's there on the table. And I, I have not made a decision one way or other. Contrary to what has been suggested in other spaces, I was not aware of much of what the conversation has been, and more importantly, this is the conversation I'm honoring. So if we can make sure that we're honoring this process, I'm committed to doing that. There's no done decision about this. The only done decision that I feel that I've made is that this will not be on W1 or Burlington. Now, I appreciate the comment earlier because I do believe that if we had more money, if we had uh, an opportunity to really think about how this might be differently for us curriculum-wise, maybe down the line that might have been a conversation. But I also know that's the only space that we have left for expansion is on that side in the Silver Spring lot. It's not ideal for construction of a science and math building, and it costs more to get that done. And knowing what I've had to do to fight to keep the money that we have now, even having had it reduced, there's no way that I know we can get more money from a county and state to support that. So that I am fully on board with having this Falcon Hall back on the conversation and to know that there are implications for both of those decisions. Thank you for asking that. Right. If you have a yellow, uh, pink card in your support of that. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. I've got the mic. So, um, right. Let me give you. <laughs> My name is Erin Fulham. Let me tell you who gets more I don't shit. know if this mic is working, but maybe you can hear me. OK, good. Um, I'm a, I'm a com community member. I have lived here a long time. I am also a user of the Falcon Hall facility. I want to thank you so much for putting it back on the table and to consider it. Um, in addition to being that, I'm also a health care provider. I graduated here from the nursing program in 1989 and went on to become a certified nurse midwife. I totally believe in the absolute importance of health being, fitness being part of the health that you are teaching the students over in the health program on Georgia Avenue. And I think it sends the wrong message to get rid of your athletic facilities and your health facilities. Um, and I think that's a huge problem in this country that we are not having our, our society be physically active. And I think you're sending the wrong message to students both as individuals and as future healthcare providers to get rid of that facility. I would also like to say that before I was um, a nurse midwife, I studied economics. So I want to also point out, as um, some of the other speakers have said, that the cost is not just the dollars of putting each building, building up. The cost is also, what are you giving up? And by giving up Falcon Hall, that cost something. And by maybe building another building, that costs something. So you have to factor in all of that as the cost, not just how much is it going to take, how many dollars is it going to build this building or that building. It's the cost of what is lost. 
and what the future cost is. I think that's what, what, what um, my neighbor was trying to say, is that you have to factor in all of those the cost. So thank you. I, I really appreciate your comment because I, I think health and wellness is certainly a very critical thing that we need to be doing and is certainly a part of what our community as a whole needs. And I think one of the other costs that's not examined in here is also the cost of what it takes for us to keep Falcon Hall open. So I, one of the things I challenged my team after I heard the last session, um, I think there might be a, a, a fact sheet around here somewhere. I said, well, let's help me understand this building. 1978 is constructed, two-story facility. And then I said, well, tell me about the health of that building itself, since we're talking about health and wellness. Here's the thing that I think is very interesting to me about this. Besides the fact that we have uh, leaky roofs there, lack of air conditioning, it's not ADA compliant, it has energy inefficiency, uh, since we talk about sustainability. We also, in terms of the, the VFA, which I, many of you in the room may be aware of, this is how you determine a facility's condition. This particular facility rates a .48. Uh, most buildings you want to see any score over 0.08 would have as a problematic. A score of 1.0 suggests it to be condemned. This building is right in the middle of that because it has over $5 million of deferred maintenance that we have to do in that. So to invest money into a building that is significantly compromised, and if we can get a new facility down the line and partner with the community, I completely agree with you that if we had the opportunity, and I, uh, I have a, a niece, not a niece, so she's like a niece, but looking at college campuses, and she makes a lot of distinctions about where she wants to go. She's looking at a campus that has a rock wall on it. She loves that idea. She's very physically fit and she has many uh, opportunities she's exploring there. But at the end of the day, I have to prioritize what students need for graduation, what resources that we have for them to get to those facilities that will do that, and in the end also how I cannot be a greater burden on future folks who have to make these types of decisions. I, I am hopeful that it, the group that's going to come together is going to be able to offer some insights on this that may help us get to a point going to the question that someone asked earlier. But all of those costs, I agree with you, are implicit in this conversation. Uh, and we have to be able to prepare to look at all of them as well, which I think is the other point of what you said. Thank you. Uh, before we, oh, she's okay. just agreeing. Okay. Pink card, don't raise yeah. your hand, pink card. Right. But, wait a minute, before we take more questions. Uh, we have a, uh, the fact sheet that you were just okay. referring to on the Falcon Hall, we'd like to uh, disseminate that as well. Uh, I, I wanna be able to get as many questions as possible, so I wanna be able to go around the room and get different people and different uh, stakeholders and different points of view. So I, I promise I'll do the best I can. I'm not trying to ignore anybody on purpose and so forth. I do want to be able to get people who have not had an opportunity to also speak as well. All right. So as handing out, uh, let's just wait uh, a couple seconds and then we'll take a, a question. All right. I'll get you next. All right, if I may have, yes. Hi, my name is Vicki Drake, and I am both an employee of the college and I am a resident of Montgomery County in Silver Spring. And I wanted to support what you were saying about the life cycle of these buildings, because I work in one right over here, and every time it rains, I have to worry about the fact that it's gonna flood, and I'm gonna have to call facilities, and they're gonna have to come out, and they're gonna have to check the drywall, and they're gonna have to check the windows, and they're gonna have to repaint if it's been damaged, and if it doesn't get repainted, then it's gonna look like, and students aren't going to appreciate that. So when we're looking at our options here, you've got an option that takes down Falcon Hall and Science South, which are both old buildings. Let's be honest, they're both old. And you can get it done in four years, get it science and math, and then you can turn to the future. If you don't take Falcon Hall now, you're still gonna be probably demolishing it in the next 10 years, 15 years. So at that point, you're still gonna be without a gym on this campus, am I right? I mean, we're really talking about, is it now or is it later? What's gonna best serve our students? And yes, it's gonna be an impact, but these buildings are coming to the end of their life. You cannot deny that. And so I think to support our students, we need to be realistic and look at our best options. So just consider what you're trading off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any response? I'll, 
I'll, I'll okay. determine. Do you have, okay. All right. Yes, sir, in the front. Can I have you hold the microphone closer, please? My name is Yemi Onia. I teach biology here at Takuma Park. And I, I want to follow up on what she just said. Um, I see no imponderables there. All I see are choices. We need a center of excellence for science and engineering in Takuma Park. Montgomery College already have, has one in Rockville, has another one in Germantown. Takuma Park is waiting. I was at the last meeting. All I hear what people were saying, uh, we want to keep the swimming pool, keep the tennis court, we want to keep the falcon hall. Then my question to all of us here, men and women of honor, this is 2017. We are talking about the 1980s. Where do you want to go? In the next few years, you want to buy a new car? It will be all electric, solar, powered by solar. No filling up at the gas station. You want a taxi? The taxi will arrive at your door. No driver. You get into the taxi. Destination, please. The taxi will take you to your destination, no driver. That is the future. What we need to address here are the choices. I listened last meeting, and I've just listened here tonight. The college administration has made a lot of contacts with the community. And as we just heard a few minutes ago from the president, all options are still on the table. But please, Takuma Park must look into the future. A center of excellence in science and engineering. The multiply effects on the business community in producing a workforce for the 21st century. Faculty excellence in teaching. Students being prepared for the occupations of the 21st century choices. The college has done it before in Germantown and Rockville. Well, what are we waiting for? Thank you. Thank you. Let me go to the center of the room. Yes, sir, in purple. I guess it was sort of a question that uh, about the second uh, master plan where Science North stays for the next. Uh, I'm sorry. Again? Oh, my name is Jason Michelle. I'm a lab coordinator in, in this building, actually, for chemistry. Okay. And um, so, uh, oh, the, the second master plan leaves Science North in place for at least another decade or something like that. And I was wondering, though, uh, the labs are outdated now, and I was wondering if there would be a plan to maybe at least renovate the the lab space or renovate in the interior of Science North because they're, you know, as part of that second master plan, because they have to, I mean, sci in my mind, my Science North needs to go, but if we can re at least renovate it inside, at least renovate the labs, then maybe that would be okay. Th then maybe the second plan would be okay, I don't know, but even though we lose Falcon Hall. But I just wondered, was there some plan to renovate any part of Science North in the second master plan? Thank you. Well, as, as I mentioned, the second master plan actually now has, has Science North uh, probably five to ten years out before it actually would, would be either renovated or, or demolished and, and, and uh, replaced. Uh, we can look at uh, some deferred maintenance funds that are provided by both the county and, and the state uh, and look at maybe a phased way of, of upgrading some of those laboratories. Uh, I couldn't promise that we could do the whole building, but we could look at selected things, working with the faculty and, and the support staff here and, and identifying those spaces and seeing what we could do to do some, some upgrades. So, yeah, we will look at that. We'll, we'll go out. We'll approach you. So, okay. Thanks for asking that. Thank you. In the back, in the purple. Finally, finally. Hi, I'm Anita Powell, and I'm alumni and a member of the Board of Governors for the college. 
I have attended all of the community com conversations and I share with you that I am really impressed with the turnout of the neighbors and their willingness to work as well as to participate in the conversation. While we agree that the building must be built, but as an alum, we would like to talk about the need to get it done as soon as possible with minimal delay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Pink sheet to uh, agreements. All right. Other questions? In the, come on that side. Behind you. Hi, my name's David Kaplan and I live in, in Tacoma Park. Um, I really want to believe that um, using the north and south site are on the table, but every time I hear a discussion of maintaining Falcon Hall and doing it there, I'm hearing nothing but negativity from you. Can you confirm that the option of constructing on north and south the science and math facility would meet the students' needs? Yes. Right. I, but I'll also say with you, part of why you hear the concern about uh, Falcon Hall is the incredibly poor quality of the building. So that's part of the reaction when you hear it. But yes, that was the first facilities master plan. The plan was to put it on north and south, leave Falcon Hall there, at some point demolish it and put in a new facility. That leads to my second question. I mean, Falcon Hall is a tremendous resource for this campus. It's astounding to me that you would want to strip this campus from those athletic facilities for the, the, the kids that, that, this, that this school serves, it is essential to maintain a facility like that. And I understand that it needs repair, but we all know why it needs repair, because you haven't put repair funds into it. And so, of course, it needs to be renovated. That was always understood. And so, if you were to construct it north and south, um, the science building, would you commit to also renovating Falcon Hall and maintaining those athletic facilities that make this campus special? No. So the reason I will not commit to that is because these funds, have, we don't have state funds for that or county funds. Here's a very serious reality about this. Uh, the priorities oftentimes are not set by us, as you all know. The state of Maryland uh, very seldom funds two specific types of things, athletic facilities and parking garages. So in fact, Parking on most things that we have in for Montgomery College has been funded either solely by the county or has been funded by students and county dollars. The state will not contribute to that. In fact, the state also will not contribute to athletic facilities. So any resources that we put into that have been dollars that we have. If we have a spend over, we go to the county and ask for a special uh, significant amount of dollars to do that. To do the types of repairs, it's not that we don't want to invest in Falcon Hall. Uh, I'm going not. I'm going to try not to hear intent in your question. The reality is we don't have the resources for it, and as a facility that is almost lived, is useful life cycle. It is not a matter of saying that we don't believe that we should have health facilities in the community. It doesn't believe it doesn't mean that we don't think that our students deserve. We have our basketball team here. We have other things that we use here. But we're also recognizing that we have to prioritize what students need for graduation. What they need for graduation are science and math courses in a facility that meets that. We do have it in our facilities master plan to redesign and to put in a new health and wellness center. We don't have resources for that right now. Yeah, I mean, so I can't make a commitment to, to your question, no. Yeah, and the thing that concerns me, you talk about a new health and wellness center, and I listened carefully, and it was 10 years out optimistic, and we yes. all know what that means. Yes. It means it's not going to be in our lifetime. And, and, that's, and that's fearful. That's fearful. You should be fearful for everybody here in this room that you will lose your athletic facilities for pretty much forever, for the foreseeable future, if, if you do it. I, and, I, I, I and, think that's... Yeah. yeah, that's not true. I, I have one last quick short question. At, um, I'm sorry, at one point you said that if you were to construct at Falcon Hall, you would maintain um, the setback that's there in accordance with state and local county regulations. And I'll tell you, when I heard that in accordance with state, county, local regulations, I got a little nervous because it made me not understand what you were saying. <laughs> and so could you commit that if you were to actually construct at Falcon Hall, it would occupy the exact same footprint, it would be no closer to the street? than the existing Falcon Hall? On the Tacoma Park, uh, Tacoma Avenue side, yes. And how about on the Fenton? Well, the, uh, like I said, we need to look at that. And basically, when we're looking at it, we want to have it as close as we can to the current footprint. But there may be some requirements 
that we're not aware of yet or once the design is complete and we take that to the, to the zoning folks, to the planning folks, they may tell us we, you can't do it like that. You got to do something a little bit different. But the plan is what we want to do is keep it as close to that particular setback as we have right now. And that's what we're going to try to do. But like I said, we don't know what's going to go on. We need to have another question here, okay? I hope that answered your question. Well, we're going to do what we can, but you know, we're, we're constrained by also uh, you know, what the codes are, what the, what the building codes are, and, and the sustainability codes. All right, let's go on this. Thank you, Mark. And we'll come to the middle. I'm Tanya Seed, and I am the health and fitness coordinator on campus and the former department chair on campus for health and PE. I've been here almost 10 years. Um, August will be my 10th year on campus. Um, so I think the timing of me getting my turn kind of works out well. <laughs> um, for people who are concerned, I mean, I just want to say that the building is really, I mean, it needs to go. It really does. And for someone who's in there and has been there a long time, um, it's hard to say, but it needs to go. I mean, it's an old building. We have so many problems in there. And just waiting longer is not going to really help anyone. Um, being able to move the campus forward is really important. You know, being able to help the students with science and math. And, you know, I, I trust that this, the college will include us in that. I mean, they've, they've been told, you know, they're going to include health and be, and I believe that. Um, so I just would like to just think, you know, think about that. And you know, as someone who's been in the building a long time, um, you know, probably the most vested one in here, right, for the building, maybe. Um, but, you know, it's, it's time to let it go. It's a, it's a bad building. It needs to go. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, we can have um, new facilities built on the campus in the future, but we can't do that if we just keep leaving it there. You know, so that's all I wanted to say. So uh, going to your point, and I asked my team because they, uh, I needed to understand based on the responses that we've heard here. So just in terms of what we need to have done in the existing facility as it is now, uh, we need a new mechanical system components there that cost $2.388 million. We need an elevator compliance to replace the elevator to meet current code. That's 100000 Energy savings, removing siding, insulating, and waterproof the building envelope, $3 million. ADA compliance in Title IX upgrades to 1970s lockers rooms, roughly $350,000. We looked at what's being offered in the class right now. And I'm going to say, I need you to know I hear you. I know that we have faculty and staff who are concerned based on what they're hearing and how these things play out. And I just need you to know as your president, I hear you. I know what you're saying. This building right now, we offer be, be, uh, beginning swimming is offered there. Three sections of this course are offered in the fall with a total of 36 students enrolled. Two sections of this course were offered in spring 2017 with a total of 24 students enrolled. We also have open swim lessons Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Average daily use average, before somebody tells me I'm not counting right, average is 17 people per day. Pool passes, community members can purchase pool passes, roughly $190, an annual pass. Currently, there are 85 pool, pa uh, pool passes purchased by community members. Maybe more people use it than that, but that's what we have on record. I also can tell you that if we had to prioritize what our facility needs are, math and science is a higher facility need for us than our Falcon Hall. Love that facility, I'm a huge basketball fan, I wish I swam more, but I do know for a fact that this is a need. We also know that there are options within less than a mile to three miles away from this campus. And we're also willing to be a part of the solution in that space. So that is, um, that is those, I, and I go back to my other fact, choices. So there are choices that we have to make. There has not been a final decision, but these are all the things that figure into the types of choices and realities that I have to face in terms of making that decision. All right, Ms. Kovar, right here. Thank you, uh, Peter Kovar. I'm the um, Tacoma Park City Council member from this area. Live just a few blocks from here. And I want to thank you, Dr. Powell, for being here and for responding to the earlier question about what's on the table and, and confirming that the earlier um, master plan also is. And I know the question was asked from over here. The reason I think there was some confusion about it was that that is 
a new or new-ish position because previously that wasn't back on the table. So that's a change and that's why some people have asked about that. Uh, a couple of other quick observations and then I have two specific questions. Um, on Falcon Hall, I don't know a lot about the specific conditions of it, but uh, that master plan emerged and made, was made public on February 1st of last year. So prior to that, Falcon Hall may have needed renovation, but it wasn't the driving force here. That, at that point, up until February 1st, it was going to be Science North and Science South. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate also, I just want to say for the students who are here, everybody in the community and all the residents commit to the need for improved uh, science um, facilities. So no one should be concerned about that. My two specific questions are this, and this fa one falls off on Mr. Kaplan's point. So if the setback stays the same, but the square footage you want is there, does it have to be taller than the current Falcon Hall? And the second question is, on the construction for the previous master plan, which was Science North and Science South, uh, and there was talk about it being an eight-year process, and when I spoke to Mr. Mills earlier about this, it was two years of design, two years tear down and construction, then two years of design, two years tear down and construction. So what about two years of design for both and do them in six years? And then that gets pretty close to the four and maybe it ends up being about the same. So if those two questions could be answered on the height and square footage and on the alternative construction plans, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, uh, to, to uh, kind of address uh, your first question, which is height uh, on, on Falcon Hall, I think we, I've mentioned earlier, and I'll, I'll continue to say this, is that uh, on the, uh, the Falcon Hall side of the, of if we're looking at the, uh, the current master plan, uh, the idea is that about a two-story building on the Falcon Hall site with about a three-story building far back where Science uh, South would be. Uh, the massing would be more toward the Science South side of the building. Um, and that's the way we look at it. As I said on, on the, uh, the previous master plan, is two massive four-story buildings. And there, there's no, no wiggle room in that. Um, and can you repeat your second question, please? The timing of the construction, of why you have to, if you have two separate buildings, why does one, why can't they both be designed at the same time? Well, number one, uh, there's one number one question is, is the cash flow for, for how we we're funded. Uh, we would be funded in, in phases. And so the phasing would be uh, one of the limiting factors is that. The other factor is, is that uh, construction methods, construction materials actually uh, are changing from day to day. Uh, costs are changing from day to day. And to, to try to commit to, uh, to designing something that may not uh, work out. Maybe we, uh, in the two years while we're designing uh, the first phase, in the second phase there may be something that uh, we can do better, we can do uh, faster, quicker, but the idea is if you try to design two buildings at one time, then you've got two that just kind of are twins. Um, maybe we don't want twins, at least uh, on the, uh, the original master plan, twin large, you know, large mass constructions. I prefer to kind of look at it and make sure we can have something that maybe is a little bit different. Maybe one has uh, some, some changes in technology. As, as you know, technology changes from month to month. So we may be able to take the second building and improve the technology to, to improve our, our uh, abilities to, uh, to service our students. Okay. All right. Questions over on this side? Yes. Yes. Either one of you. All right, um, my name is Jade, and um, I'm a current student here at Montgomery College, as well as I'm a student senator. Um, I don't really have a question, but I feel like uh, for a lot of people in the audience, in the community, I feel like you guys would great benefit from a student's perspective on this. Um, this is my first semester here. Um, I'm a theater major, so science isn't really in my, in my category so much, but I strongly, strongly believe that education is first before anything. And though we have, um, we have a little disagreement with the Falcon Hall, I came here to get my education before anything. And for some, for a lot, fitness and nutrition is almost like a luxury. It's, it's like, it's a, it's a, Plus, but my education, the reason why I pay my tuition here is that's, that's it, is education. 
So I don't understand um, a lot of people's perspectives on, oh, the Falcon Hall, the Falcon Hall, swimming pool. Uh, what, about our, what about our future? What about our generation? That's what I'm trying to get. So, yeah. Pink sheets, please. Thank you. All right. Let me go and I'll come back. Other questions in the middle? Yes, sir. We're going to have Marcus. Three minutes, no more. Okay. My name is Rupert Chappelle. I work over there. And uh, I try to use a toilet in another building for obvious reasons. Uh, I'd like to just cut to the chase here. This isn't about Falcon Hall's height. I went there the other day and was disappointed to find out that the elevator only goes up to the second floor. It's a three-story building. It's going to be replaced with another three-story building. OK. I didn't know that Montgomery College was in the business of giving people swimming pools. I thought that this were, our business was education. But obviously, we're going to be taking a swimming pool away from you people. And I'm wondering, what can we do to provide these people with a swimming pool for the next couple of years in order to make them happy? <laughs> because this is about the swimming pool, as far as I can see. They don't care about the rest of it. I disagree with you on that. Um, I, I, um, I fully appreciate the fact that you have a different perspective on this. But what I can tell you that I've heard, I think there's a very clear recognition that the college needs a new math and science facility. I also think that the community as a whole supports the work of Montgomery College. Where we disagree on is where the facility needs to be and how, what it looks like. Uh, I think that your point about the pool is, is um, an interesting one. I think that there are a lot of people who would say as a comprehensive community college, we serve multiple purposes. And we try to accommodate many members of our community in what we do, whether it be helping them move to introductory level courses to transfer, whether it be helping us to have them go to get career education, whether it be the arts, theater, whatever the case we may do. So there's lots of options that we try to meet multiple needs in the community. But it, it comes down to choices. And part of that is trying to figure out how do we align resources with the choices that have to be made and ultimately what our primary mission is. So for me, what I am considering, and I think um, one of the things that Mr. Mills actually brought to the table is that as we're looking at um, if, if the decision at some point is to demolish, move, go with the option number two, and that's how I think of them, old plan, new plan. If we go with the new plan where we are moving away from getting rid of foul, are there ways that we could supplement that? Uh, the group had already went back and started looking at cost of trying to help supplement um, um, membership fees at different places, running a shuttle back and forth. So those are some of the options that we've been trying to see if that works. Um, but I don't know if it would. I don't know if it's sustainable. Um, and I think at the end of the day, what I, what I do want to speak to is I don't... I, don't, I try not to attack people's intent. I try not, and I try to listen. And what I believe is that the community has the best interests of the college in mind. We just have different beliefs about how we get there. So that's what I, I hope that um, we might be able to find some of those options, regardless of which option we go with. I hear you. I hear you. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman in blue. Hi, um, my name is David Ash. I live on Philadelphia Avenue, just a few houses away from the college. Been here for about 27 years. Swimming at the pool for about 27 years, too. Um, so a couple of things. Um, you know, one thing that, that, uh, that I've seen is Montgomery, the, the, the pool is closed now for maintenance, and it's, it's been maintained remarkably every year. Um, unfortunately, the building around it hasn't been maintained. The locker rooms are, are horrible, um, but they're you know the, it's a remarkable resource, and the it, you know the the basketball court also is used and, and magnificent. So I'm I'm an advocate for that. Um, a couple of things that I've heard over the course of these three meetings, um, one is that uh, a lot of students have have talked about the facilities in the science buildings, and we've seen some of that, and I'm just wondering. 
you know, there, there are well-equipped middle schools that, that have better facilities than, than are in here. And it's not a matter of making a new building, although I'm not, I mean, I understand that we, we need a new building. Um, but why? You know, when, when I want to put stainless steel appliances in my kitchen, I don't tear down my house to do that. I, I upgrade. And so why aren't the facilities upgraded now? Or why aren't they upgraded five years ago? Uh, they're dingy. They're horrible. Um, and, and it doesn't require a new building for that. So, so that's, that's one question I have. Um, and, and, you know, the other thing is it seems like we have this dilemma. We have two choices. Nobody's particularly happy with either of them. You're refusing about the, the W1 spot, and, and thank you for making that study available. I hadn't seen that, and I'd been interested in, in looking at that. And it seems like after this conversation is over, we need to convene as a community with, with all the constituents represented, not just the pool people or not just the science people, but everybody to, to talk about this more. And, and you know, I think you know, one of the follow-ups will be the suggestions about what we do after this. And I hope that there's something that will, will bring all the constituencies together. Thank you for that. Ooh, that got loud. Um, John is going to talk to your second question in a little bit, but going to your first question, uh, this, this is the, the paradox of publicly supported institutions. Uh, we have a wonderful county that has a significant budget that it has to allocate both capital and operating dollars to. Um, and, and a matter of fact, we're the, we're the little E in the county compared to uh, MCPS. And our capital projects are split evenly between the county and the state in most cases. And as a result of that, we go through a very deliberative process to have to get projects to move up. For the state of Maryland, in this past year, we had $60 million for all 16 community colleges for capital projects. Now, that to me I find to be the most troubling thing that I can think of. You can't buy a building at College Park for less than $100 million but yet you have 16 community colleges that are looking at deferred maintenance, upgrades, all the types of things that you're talking about, and new buildings coming out of a $60 million pool. And then we're fortunate to live in a county that says, you go out and get that money from the state and we'll do our part to match that. So if you go to some community colleges across this state, their facilities are worse than this. But we have a county that has invested in us. I would say that I'll speak on behalf of my facilities people. They work like hell to keep these buildings functional and to keep them looking as good as that they do. The fact that we have a funding formula the way that we do in the state of Maryland is what has created the problem. So certainly the, the new math and science building at our Rockville, our, is actually it's called the Science Complex at the Rockville campus, it took 24 years, if I'm correct, from the moment it made it onto a capital list until we opened it up last month, two months ago, and had a ground, 24 years. So for us, the reality about this, we have to come to our county and our state. They give us refurbishing money, they give us money, but we have to spread it between three community colleges, uh, excuse me, three campuses. We have to spread that between multiple needs. And the reality about that math and science building, in particular science building, costs more money. They're just simply very expensive because of all the things that go into science facilities. So I, I'd like to think that uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us to figure out how what used to be 80 million, which is now 60 million, that we have to share for all community colleges, yet half of undergraduates in the state of Maryland attend a community college, yet we don't get nearly the same portion of capital dollars for, re for projects. So we do the best we can with the resources that we have. We have to prioritize among three campuses, and we also have to figure out what's the most pressing need. This building, as you described, uh, my first week here, seven years ago, they walked me through this building, and I was aghast that we had a science building where we had literally duct tape, folks don't want to use bathrooms, students tell me about how bad it smells, all the time, but what I do know for a fact is we have exceptional teaching that occurs here. So I want a building, and I think all of you want a building that lives up to that teaching and the needs of our students who may be theater majors and don't want to take science. So. Um, but you know you gotta take a science to graduate, right? Okay, I'm just checking. Thank you. Uh, young lady, then I'll come to the center. 
and then over there. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roshani. I'm a current student at Montgomery College as well as a student senator with Jade. Um, and I really just have a comment more catered to you, sir, um, because you said you weren't going to be alive by the time the buildings would be finished, uh, construction and so on. Um, but Oh, the new athletic facility, I apologize. And the Science North, yes. Um, so a lot of times we make decisions uh, that we may not be able to partake in. Um, but at the dinner that I just had before coming here, we talked about standing on one another's shoulders. And I currently have a brother that's 10 years old and he would like to be an engineer. And I would hope that my parents owning their home, he might be able to come to Montgomery College. Um, he would need these buildings, not just the Falcon Hall, but he would need the science and engineering classrooms and the state of the art uh, equipment. I heard someone saying something about state of the art earlier as well. Um, so I would hope that we would make the best decision for him and his future and not look to so much what we're going to be able to do and how we're going to be able to use it. Um, and that's really just my comment. Thank you. Use the sheets, please. The pink sheets. All right. I want to make sure we're, thank you. Over on this side, thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I am a neighborhood resident. I live on Islington Street, so adjoining the, co the campus. But I guess I wanted to share more in my professional capacity. Um, I work for a consulting firm, and I've had the opportunity to do um, both state and national evaluations of community colleges. So I've had the opportunity to tour and sit in on classes in uh, community colleges campuses in Washington State, Oregon, Minnesota, New York, and a handful of other places. Um, when my husband and I bought our house almost eight years ago, we were really excited at the prospect of being next to community college because we knew all of the great things that they would potentially offer us. Um, and we've been very happy with that experience so far. Um, we're excited to see the campus continue to grow and serve the larger community. Um, I would say compared to a lot of other schools I've seen, this facility is not good. I mean, their community colleges are the cutting edge of college campuses right now. As higher education costs skyrocket and families can't afford to send their children to four-year private schools, um, it's really important that as a community we invest in community colleges. And I think that um, I, 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 as a resident of one of the most wealthy counties in the country, you would think that our college facilities would be um, nicer, <laughs> for lack of a better term, nicer. So um, I've, you know, I, I've been on a lot of campuses and they're a lot nicer. So I think it's just, um, I know not everyone has the opportunity to, to do that and I, that's what I can bring to the table. So I'm excited to hear about a new building and I think that, um, I hope the decision can be made that really maximizes the opportunity for students and, um, and facilities that will continue to serve future generations and give them the best education possible. Thank you. Use it, pink sheet. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, in a pink, uh, in an orange. Yes, sir. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Cedric Kwam, and then I'm here as a student. Um, I'm a current student here at Montgomery College. And I just wanted to share with you about uh, an experience that happened to me about a year and a half ago now. Um, when I had the opportunity to try with the school basketball team and at the same time I got accepted in the Renaissance College on this program and at that point I had to make a choice and I'm also uh, a biology major so um, at that point I had to make a choice between my school and the basketball because looking at the basketball schedule and um, the other intangibles I had to choose between school and sports so at the end, I had to choose school because that is the most important things that we all do and other students that were also trying out for the basketball team had to make some, some, some choices like search to, um, some just like search to make sure that they are coming here first for what's important, which is their education. So I think that having, um, constructing, or oh, not having um, the Falcon Hall and building the building the science, um, the new state of the art um, science building instead of the Falcon Heart, the Falcon, um, the Falcon Built Hall. Um, I think this is something that is more of a priority 
as far as school is concerned to, con to, con to build the um, state of the art facility in science. And um, with the Falcon Hall, um, I, I'm, I believe that many other students, even student athletes would agree with me that this, the, the construction of the, of the science um, building um, in, the, in, in the Falcon Hall and the South Building um, would be the priority to be done first before we actually look at the Falcon Hall. That's what I just wanted to admit. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Another question, sir, in a blue jacket, yes. Black jacket, blue jacket, right in front. Thank you, my, my name is Bernie Aarons and I live in Tacoma Park. Um, I'd just like to make a couple of comments and then ask a question. What's that? Daughter, Sorry. I'd like to make a couple of comments and ask a question. The first comment is I think this has been the, more, the most civil and respectful of the conversations we've had in this series, and I appreciate that. I think everybody does. Um, second of all, you know, I hear President Pollard and others talk about the difficulty of getting public funds, and I'm sure that that's true. Um, my hope would be that we could come out of this with a win-win situation where we come together around a solution that's good for the college, it's good for the neighborhood, it's good for the people who use Jeckery Park, and that maybe we could harness some of this energy to go help lobby the state for more funds for this uh, facility. We'd be happy to do that. Um, I think there's a perception that somehow preserving Falcon Hall is just an idea that the community dreamed up to preserve the swimming pool, but this was the college's proposal up until two years ago, so there's obviously was merit in it then. I don't think all that merit has disappeared. I think it, in fact, the master plan called on it to be renovated. Clearly the building needs upgrading and I think nobody would, would oppose that and hopefully we can make that part of the solution if, if we preserve Falcon Hall. Um, question is about setbacks. I was a little bit confused, Mr. Mills, about what you said about whether the, your your current proposal, proposal one, would preserve the current setbacks in uh, Tacoma and, and Fenton or, or not. And when you said we have to wait to see state and local regulations, well, it's been the setback like that for years now. The state and, and local regulators obviously have approved it, so it's not clear to me what we'd have to find out more to preserve that. So I think the community would be very reassured if you would say explicitly and this is something the college said at the time you bought the bakery facility in, uh, in, on Georgia Avenue, that the expansion is going to be um, not, not to the east. It's all, all going to be to the west. But you're holding the possibility open that uh, that expansion is going to be back into the historic Tacoma. I think that causes a lot of people problems. Um, I'd like to hear you clarify that. And just one final point. A lot of people obviously in this community care, care about the pool, and I respect their views. I've lived across from Falcon Hall for 32 years. I've never set foot in the pool. Uh, I'm not going to set foot in the pool. <laughs> but I care about the possibility of your building a 135,000 square foot building in a historic neighborhood across the street, street from a park where the kids play and they're going to have to breathe that diesel fuels even though you're going to try to limit it. And those, these are honest views that a lot of people in the community feel. So could you clarify the point about setbacks? Thank you. I'll do my best. Um, on the uh, Tacoma Avenue side, we are very committed to making sure that particular setback stays there. Uh, on the uh, Fenton Street side, we're going to try to maintain what we have there. Uh, as I said, we're going to try to keep a two-story building on the lower part of that particular site with the, the massing on the, the upper side, of course, the, the science south side. Um, but as we do that, we also have to look at what maybe, and you're talking about some, some old regulations, you know, regulations have changed a little bit. We still have to take all our designs to the county planning folks. The, the city of Tacoma has to look at them also. They may say they want changes. One second, please. Regulators are going to tell you to intrude more into a historic district. I think it is very unlikely. Correct. Now let me let me make a, a point of, of, of maybe a clarification of, of about uh, wording. Okay, expansion is different than re revitalization.
Okay, we, re we are revitalizing what we have on this campus with the commitment that we're gonna try to maintain the footprint we have now. When we talk about expansion, that means additional buildings. And so we have, we have committed to expanding only to our properties or more properties we, we would attain in Silver Springs. So there's a difference between re revitalizing what we have now and what, we, what you're calling uh, expansion. Expansion means you're, you're growing bigger. You're, you're adding more land. You're adding that's more, what, that's and so a, that's, 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 that's in, 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 in my, a okay, in, in professional facilities, in professional facilities, there's a difference between revitalization and expansion. Expansion means you're buying more property, you're building more buildings. Here, we're just replacing. Okay, but okay, I, that's, that's, I wanna make sure that's, that's understood. We're not going to do any expansion as more buildings on this particular site, on this campus. We're going okay, to, we, we're I, looking I, to replace what we have now. Right. Yeah, he has a clarification. Okay. The, the, the expansion I'm talking, I don't want us to miss each other because we're using the same word differently. What, what, the, what the community's talking about is expansion is enlarging the footprint, even if it's on land that you already own. That to us is, goes against what we thought was a commitment by the well, college. Well, we, we are committed to maintaining the footprint we have based on what, what we, uh, after the design is complete, you know, and all the reviews are done, we're, we are committed to trying to keep that footprint. But as I said, once the design is complete and it goes through all those particular uh, folks that have to re uh, review it, uh, you know, by law, they have to review it. If they make us change it, we will, and we'll let everybody know, but you know, we're still committed to making sure that we try to keep that footprint. I think the other part um, for me, and I, I hope maybe this responds more specifically, this is part of what is the byproduct of the charrette process. Uh, what you go through, at least in my experience with charrette processes and what the college did the last time when we did the Charlene Nunley building, we sat down and with, with the community and we said, here are the things that we want to see. And as a result of that, that particular facility is a reflection of that. Uh, you can notice that most of the massing of that building is into the interior of the building. I think the original was done, it was something different about how uh, the flashing was done and the angles and so forth. That's part of what we bring and we are hiring as, as a part of the design process that we submitted to the state and the commitment we've made to uh, the mayor and the city, an attorney, excuse me, an architect who has very clear background in historic design, science building design, and understands how one does that within a community. And as a result of that, you go through a charrette process and says, as you're pointing out, we don't want uh, encroachments on X number of feet from the street. You want to be able to have the mass scene done here. You want it to have this particular facade. We want to protect landscape X, Y, or Z. And that is a part of what charrette process has come with. And that is uh, what the county council uh, indicated last a funding cycle, and we agreed to that readily because we'd had experience doing it before. So I think that that, to me, is where those fine-tuning of that comes in. If we say, this is the site we're going to put it on, then we have the architects who come in, and they get paid money to help us figure out how to solve that problem and to do exactly what you're talking about. That's, uh, I wish we had more time <clears throat> for questions. However, we have exhausted our time, and we, because we started to do the the follow-up and the next steps. So Dr. Pollard and Mr. Mills, thank you. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, if you have additional questions or comments, the pink sheets, uh, please write them on, on the pink sheets. And then before you leave, uh, put them on the back table, make sure that we have those as well. So here's where we are. <clears throat> we had. A lot of conversations, a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of thoughts uh, and choices. So where do we move from here? We had the three community conversations and we still need to go to the next steps. So here's what we're proposing. One is that we'll compile all the information that we're receiving from your yellow uh, pink sheets, from the comments that we heard, and then also you have an opportunity to provide more information on the website to make comments and we're going to ask you to do that before Friday, June the 16th. The web link is on your agenda, so you can use that web link. But we'd like to have those before Friday to June 16th. And what we want to be able to do, because uh, this is what you've been asking for, and this is where we are with the, the agreements and the planning group who has been 
organizing the community conversations and, and doing the agendas is establishing a working group to still hone in on where we are at this time and to focus in on coming up with viable options. So we have some proposals for you of how that's going to be established. One is the working group, all right, consists of Montgomery College, the City of Tacoma Park, and the East Silver Spring residents. And here's the charge of the working group. And this is a short working group. It's not one that goes on for years, all right? And it's not the, in place of the charrette process, as Dr. Pollard just addressed. It's to focus in on what we are talking about at this time. So the charge is, the working group task is to charge with recommending to the president of Montgomery College workable options to the building of the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus math science building using primarily either the past or present, the current master plans. Right? So as Dr. Pollard said, those are still the options that are on the table. And so what we want to be able to do is establish a working group and what we have is a couple pieces. We have the, the guidelines, the commitments, and the agreements that this working group will work under. And one is, the, the first is the level of decision making. Who gets to make the, the decisions? All right. This group will make recommendations. And the recommendations will be forward to Dr. Pollard. And Dr. Pollard and will make the final decision on behalf of the college. Right. How many recommendations? That's yet to be determined by the working group. The second one is the membership composition of the working group. We have identified the stakeholders uh, of, as residents of Tacoma Park, uh, uh, residents of Silver Spring, Historic T Tacoma, the City of Tacoma Park, Montgomery College Central Office, uh, Montgomery College students, Montgomery College academic representative uh, or a STEM faculty member, and then the Montgomery College advisory board rep. Now, this is not going to be a group of 50, all right? We're looking at narrowing it down to 13 or 14 representatives. And so we're looking at, if we give you some numbers at this time, Tacoma Park residents would have two members who would be representing Tacoma Park. Silver Spring would have two. Historic Preservation would have one. City of Tacoma Park would have two. Uh, Montgomery College students, two. The Central Office, two. Uh, academic representative or STEM faculty would be one, and the uh, community advisory board rep would be one. Right? So that's about. Hold on. Are you going to repeat that? We're going to be able to provide it for you, yes. It, this is still a, a working copy. I mean, we're still kind of doing some of the little to be determines. But I want to kind of give you the, the bigger gestalt of it right now and some of the details. The selection of the members, uh, that is to be determined how you will uh, select the members from your, your stakeholders. And we'll be able to provide more information on that. Uh, the task is to review the existing information, the data, and the resources. We're not asking this group to go out and find new data or to have new studies conducted. It's using the information that we currently have over the last number of years. You'll generate options, narrow the options, make recommendations, and then submit the final report. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, the working group, this is not a replacement or a substitution for the charrette process. Right. That is a separate uh, process altogether. The timeline. Because we want to be able to get this as completed as quickly as possible, we're looking at having the report submitted to Dr. Pollard by July 15th. Right. And we're looking at having two three-hour meetings between June 22nd and July 15th. And they will be held at uh, the City of Tacoma Park uh, Municipal Building. The expectations for the, the members uh, members will uh, agree to participate on a working group and accept the outcomes of the final decision that is uh, set forth to Montgomery College. Uh, the representatives will attend both of the meetings. So if you have a conflict of vacations or something, you cannot attend. 
uh, then we'll ask that you find somebody else. No substitutions, you have to attend both of the meetings because we want to have the continuity for that. And the representative is the collective diverse voice of the constituents, right? You're representing the group, not as a, necessarily as a personal opinion. The meeting process, uh, I will facilitate the two, uh, the two meetings and it won't be in a form of this sort. It will be a, a conference room type. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the meeting will be held at the city of Tacoma Park. Minutes for the meeting will be posted 48 hours after the meeting is over, so you have the opportunity to be able to see what happened at the meeting as well. And then there will be a time between the first and the second, so you can go out and get more information, uh, talk to your constituents, and then be able to come back to the second meeting. Uh, one that still be determined is whether it's an open or closed meeting, meaning that do we have observers observing the meeting but do not contribute to the meeting itself, they're just there, that's still to be determined. Okay. And so those are the guidelines that have been proposed and agreed upon by the, the planning group. Um, we feel that it's a, a viable uh, process to be able to narrow this down, to be able to proceed and make recommendations to, to Dr. Pollard Montgomery College. Questions that you may have? Yeah, um, you said that this will be spelled out in more detail and there still are some to be determined criteria as well for this. How will that information be disclosed? Everybody? Good, that was my next piece by math. Uh, that will be posted on the city's uh, website. All right, on the same information, there's the page that you can go to to submit your information uh, if you have more comments. What was the rationale for requiring that participants in this process be bound by the determination by the president? Is that what you said? S say it again, please, your question. I mean that you're under members' expectations. Yes, the, I will. The members will agree to participate in a working group and accept the outcomes of the final decision of Montgomery College. So you will, you will set forth the recommendations to the college and the college will make the final decision on the recommendations that are submitted. Louder, please. Hold on, can we increase the volume? Try it again now. One second, please. We're going to replace that microphone. <laughs> okay, this is working. The other one wasn't. If, if I'm a member of the task force and I represent historic Tacoma, I don't, but I'm just saying it, and I put forth certain ideas, the task force is going to either come to some agreement or it won't. If I'm in the majority and I send the ideas to the college and they reject them, I'm bound to accept the college's view. And if I'm in the minority, and the college chooses an alternative view, I'm bound to accept that and support it? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that we would like to this group to be able to come to consensus on two or three recommendations, if that's what they decide to come up with, one, however, however many recommendations they may come up with, that was, would be uh, sent up to the president. Right, right. And, then, and then what happens? And then the, the president, president will look at the, the recommendations and then has to make a decision <laughs> right. based on those recommendations. But, but is there any binding requirement on the members of this task force to then accept those decisions? I thought you said that. That's correct. Well, how does, how does that happen? I mean, I'm a free citizen of the United States. Right. We're this, just asking that. <laughs> so long as we right. have the United States, which is up in the air, but um, how, how can that possibly, what does that mean to bind the member of the task force? Being on a task force, you're making these recommendations, and so right. you're supporting the recommendations that are going forth. But you said, sir, that there might be two or three recommendations, right? Correct. I might like one and not the other. The three go forward, the president chooses one, and then I'm supposed to salute and say that's my proposal? Well, you have other options after that if 
they're not in agreement to the recommendation or the selection of the recommendation that the president made. You have other options. But I don't think you can, I'm not, I'm not trying to be argumentative, no, but I, understand. I, I don't know how you can possibly bind members of a working group to accept, and what, what does it mean? How, how are they bound? It's, it's, many times where you have groups who just send recommendations up to the decision maker, right? And that's what we're looking for here as well. So if the working group can come up with one, two, three recommendations, that goes forward, and then Dr. Pollard, as the decision maker, has to make a decision based on those recommendations. Will everybody be satisfied with the recommendation? No. No. Please. Right. I can hear it either. Right. Have the public use participants to be bound in any way if they participate in good faith and make a recommendation in good faith that you disagree with? as it's set up, you would expect the participants then to feel bound by your decision? But, I mean, the admission to participate is that, that, that they have to pay allegiance to your decision? It seems uh, the price of admission does not seem, seem awfully steep to this process. So, uh, to be very clear. May we get a microphone, please? To be very clear, this is in Darian's process. Darian is intentionally having not been on the planning group so that I would have the same experience as everybody else who sets in the group. So the planning group is composed of roughly four or five people from the college, uh, four or five people from the city, and they have developed this agreement. Uh, my perspective would be that if you agree to come into the room, at the end of the day, the decision is mine to be made. And I'm asking for people to contribute to that decision. And a part of that decision is I'm asking through these listening sessions, through the, um, the, the group that's going to offer a set of recommendations to give me that. Can I bind you to this and say, you are bound to this decision? No, I can't do that. You have options as a private citizen, do whatever you like to do. But at the end of the day, my belief is that the group wanted to say, we're done with this. And maybe, I don't know if Mayor, if you want to be able to, thank you, because I, I wasn't there. You're bound. The Binding, bounding um, is a poor choice of words. Obviously, the what we're looking what we're looking for is to have this next process to say everyone's going to enter it in good faith, be part of this working group, and then um, come out with recommendations. And we know throughout this whole process, the ultimate decision lies with Dr. Pollard, and it's an acknowledgement to say you've gone through this process. You'll give the recommendations, and at the end, you acknowledge, maybe acknowledgement, or I'm, again, it's late, I'm not, maybe I'm not thinking of the right words, that ultimately Dr. Pollard makes the decision. So I would say that, yes, I would, let's move away from maybe that we're, bind, you're right. bound to something. There's, it's more of a good faith coming, the people who put their name in, however we're gonna select people, will come to this process, work together to provide recommendations, and at the end of the day, acknowledge that Dr. Pollard will be making the decision on behalf of the college. Yeah. Let's uh, go back to the gentleman. Uh, Richard Wheel, I've been a resident of Tacoma Park for about 35 years, and um, I'm happy to have Montgomery College as the neighbor. Just one quick question. I'm looking at the working group. What's the relationship between whatever the results are of the working group and the charrette process? They're independent of each other. So people who would serve on the working group is not necessarily going to be the same people who are on the charrette process. Are there, is there going to be representation of uh, the residents? Pardon me? Is there going to be representation of residents on the charrette process? I believe that's the... Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes. absolutely. Absolutely, okay. and we have thank our you. county council member yes. Hans Reamer here to thank that we are, you know, I'm sure the college would have done the charrette process anyway, but council member Reamer is the one to assure that it's in the process. So absolutely, the residents are, and Dr. Pollitt has said tonight, and okay. so yeah. it's, it, we're, it's a you. separate process. Thank yeah. you very much, thank you. Yeah, it's not a substitution for the charrette process. All right, other, yes. How is this working group going to be Formed. Who who's responsible for choosing the people, and what's the criteria for maybe someone that wants to be on the working group? And that's what still has to be, be determined for the Tacoma Park residents, the Silver Spring residents, and a historic preservation person. Right. We didn't want to make that decision in in a vacuum. Right, and I, I will say that I want to just acknowledge on 
behalf of the city, the city staff, and um, Montgomery College staff, that the formation of this working group and the understanding that we were going to need this as a next step um, just kind of started to take formation within what last 72 four <laughs> hours. Um, so this is something that we wanted to particularly agree to stakeholders to what the task was before us. And also it was important to have sort of the, the timeline because um, of wanting to make sure that we got this in this summer before August particularly, because the city council in Tacoma Park goes on recess in the month of August. And knowing that you know August is just a harder month to kind of hold these things, John probably would like to get his life back <laughs> um, from this process. Um, so that's why also there were, there were certain things over the last, you know, three days that we prioritized. It was who's gonna be in this group, what is the task of the group, and what's the timeline um, that we can get this in to accomplish the goals. And then these other things we started talking about, but we need to come back to. Right. I know you'll have more questions, and, and we'll have more of the description up on the website for you uh, within, uh, I'm not making any problems, two days, three days, somewhere around there. Yes? I, I just want to, uh, clarify what I think I heard about this working group because this last discussion we had was really important. What, what I heard is that the working group will recognize that it is making a recommendation to the college. Correct. Uh, what Dr. Pollard is saying is Dr. Pollard, the college will not be bound to the recommendation of the working group. Not that the members are bound to the recommendation of the college. Correct. It's that the college is not bound to the recommendation of the working group. And I, that's the college's approach here. I think everyone needs to be clear. That's what the college is really saying. So consider right. that. Thank you for the clarification. All right. So with that, as I said, we'll put the information up on the website uh, as quickly as we can to for the other places to be determined. Thank you.